What's going on, happy people? I'm Robert Arrington. This is Deer Meat for Dinner, and we are in Mississippi. This is my little brother, Blue Gabe. If you watched the last video, I killed this really crazy, tall, cow horn spike looking buck. Shot him right here. But this is such a cool area. I wanted to come over here with Gabe and get his idea on where he would hunt and how he would hunt this area. I got some ideas, but I want to hear what he has to say. Where would you hunt? I'd probably be right over there in one of them pine trees so I could see across this pond. So you you would be over there? I would probably pick one of those pine trees right there except for the evening sun would be beaming right in your face. But you know deer go into those pond right there. Right, so all the deer that we saw was on that far south side. Tomorrow morning we're gonna have a south wind. It's actually turned and it's out of the west now. It'll probably be out of the south this afternoon. Um, so anytime you're setting up a tree stand, you've got to think, where is the wind coming from? Obviously, you want the wind to be in your face so that the deer aren't smelling you. You also have to think about sun. sun. What can you see? when? You, if the sun's setting out here and you're trying to shoot into the setting sun, you get a really bad glare on your scope. So that's something you got to think about and it's just really hard to stare into the sun. I never even thought about sitting over there to tell you the truth. I was thinking about dropping down and hunting somewhere over there where I could see back into the woods more, but at the same time, that could backfire because you're trying to kind of getting into their space. I could hit them from there all the way across. Well, if you sit there, for one evening and you see where they're moving predominantly over there, then you can get in a little tighter. Right. So if you're if you're a deer hunter, what are some of the things that you look for when you're setting up? Now, it's different if you're rifle hunting, archery hunting, or muzzleloader hunting because you have different distances. But if you're rifle hunting, what are some of the things that you look for when you're setting up? just got up in the tree. Austin's just above me. We're overlooking that dry lake. It's not really dry, but it's it's drained out. Gabe wanted to sit all the way over there facing this way, which would have been good, but the sun would have been in your eyes. And as the sun got low, it would put a glare on your scope. So, we came around the back side of the, of the lake, climbed up in a tree. The wind is still perfect, but now we're in the shade, looking out into the area where we expect to see the deer. We've been set up for probably about 45 minutes now. We've already seen two deer, maybe three. That's a good sign. We've been seeing deer way down here on the north end and the wind switched out of the south. So we're gonna try to get around them this way. Now, anytime I'm coming into the woods like this, hey, I wanna load my gun. I wanna back the power out and I wanna adjust this just to about 100 yards. Reason is, lots of times I've had deer jump up, look at me, and you gotta be able to throw it up, put it on them and shoot, you know? Make sure the gun's on safety. I'm carrying this because I don't want to get so hot walking in. Austin's 
This little pond was made by beavers. It's called a beaver pond. That little dike over there is their lodge. That's where they live. They cut down all these trees, make that dam to build their pond. I expect the deer to use on the edge over there. The wind is out of the south. Everything feels perfect. How you like that? I don't know what it is with me and Austin this year getting the old one horn, but this deer, his whole life has just been growing a little nub over here. And they said, if you see him, take him out. Sure enough, we looked, I'm like, of all deer, it's the one they wanted me to get. Years ago, I watched a commercial that Mossy Oak produced, and it was Mr. Fox Hayes and Toxie Hayes, and they were holding an acorn in their hand, talking about how you plant a seed and huge trees grow up. In the brand Mossy Oak, they have worked tirelessly for my entire lifetime helping hunters and outdoorsmen worldwide. I believe it's important to take care of the things that we love. My friends asked me what a man my age was doing playing hardwoods. I believe the good that men do will live long after they're gone. I'm just tickled pink, you guys, and uh, I appreciate you guys being here with me. Let's go clean this sucker up and uh, head to the hill. Love you. Hey, hey, so we are back at camp, and I found out what they called this deer. His name was Numero Uno, so old number one. And you guys have seen me clean so many animals, and uh, last night, we hung this deer all night long, so he's nice and cold. And I got to thinking, I got an idea. So look what I have here. I have a, a little ratchet strap, it's got a hook on it. And I got a deer here. Just like every other time, I rang around the legs, came down the seam, and now I will pull this down. If you start, if you start up here versus down here, most people will hang the deer from the Achilles right there. Then you're down here, there's a lot of big hair and that's where a lot of your good meat is. If you start up here, it's very easy to get this to start peeling. Just like that. That actually worked better than I expected. But that's probably because he's cold. Look how perfect that is. See how a little bit of that tore off there? If it starts to tear, then make sure you use your knife and cut it loose a little bit like this. See this here? Just go to the top of it. There you go, just like that. Now, come around the tail. There's a little joint in here. If you hold the tail itself, you can pop it loose most of the time. There you go, just like that. Now, here is where my 
ratchet jack comes in. I remembered seeing this. And what you're gonna do is you're gonna make a loop this way, then a loop this way. Just like that. Take all this hide, pull it through the loops, just like that. And then there you go. And all we've got to do now is just come right down these legs. Now, that came out perfectly clean. You can tell this deer's got very little fat on him because it's the end of the rut, which means it's at the end of their breeding season. They've been running hard, and so he's used up all of his fat. We have a neck roast here. We've got our shoulders, back strap, ribs. On the inside, right in here, are your tenderloins. These are your hams. That's all the meat that comes off of a deer. Now, I'm gonna quarter this thing out. We're gonna be heading back to the house to cook something amazing with Chef Mike from Antler in Ontario, Canada. You guys, deer meat for dinner is only possible because of you. And I wanna tell you thank you so much for all that you have done for me. Look at how nice that is. Okay, what's up guys? We are here at the Mossy Oak headquarters just outside West Point, Mississippi. This is world famous chef Michael Hunter from the restaurant Antler in Ontario, Canada. He's been up here sharing camp with us and he cooked something last night that was so amazingly good, I wanted to do it again. So, that's big old backstrap off of the deer I killed yesterday. And uh, tell us a little bit about your restaurant. All right, my restaurant is called Antler. We're in Toronto, Canada. And I just want to celebrate wild game. And the best way to do that is just to, uh, to serve everything that, that comes from where I live. So this is really what's cool. Whenever we were coming up here, they were telling us about your book. It's called The Hunter Chef Cookbook. This thing is full of so many cool stories, pictures, recipes. It's really awesome. There will be a link to this in the description below. But first, show them what you got. <laughs> all right, so the first thing you wanna do with uh, with a backstrap is take off all this silver skin. Um, it's it's super tough and uh, and it just gets kind of chewier, um, you know, the more you cook it. So, um, you know, any kind of boning knife you want, um, just stick the tip under and then, it's almost like a fish fillet, you know, you can kind of angle the blade up and, uh, and you're not taking off any meat, um, just the silver. So while you're boning that out, yep. you've come up here for the last four or five years. Yep. What do you think of these guys? <laughs> I, uh, when I started hunting, I was really selfish. It was, it was all about, you know, meat for me and, and, and providing meat for my family. Um, and what I really learned from these guys is, uh, is conservation and learning about, you know, giving back. And, yeah. uh, you know, that was probably the biggest impact um, the Masio families had, had on me. And they're as real as a turnip green. Like, see this? We're this this cabin we're in right now. This is where Mr. Fox Hayes was born. Toxie Hayes is like the owner of of Mossy Oak right now, who really came up with it, and whatnot. But his dad, who is this legend, Fox Hayes, was born in this cabin. Just like the house I grew up in, there'll be dishes on the counter where someone washed them, let them dry, cold drinks out outside. They built a food plot right down there, and there's a tree stand in the backyard. This is just, they are as real as it gets. Yeah. And to me, that's what makes me so excited about just being around them. Absolutely. And they love you, by the way. <laughs> they uh, they really accepted me uh, into the family, and uh, uh, I couldn't couldn't be more uh, proud of that. Hey, look at that. Oh my there's gosh. some of your bullet. <laughs> so, there's part of my bullet. Obviously, there's the bullet. What are you, what are you shooting? 6.5 Creedmoor. Yeah. But I shot him straight on, 
went right through the backbone and lodged in the skin. Oh, dude, there's dude. the casing. No way. Oh, that's amazing. Look at that. I, I really can't believe that. There you go. Hey, he didn't go nowhere. <laughs> We're going to leave that one right there. Look at that, you guys. Look how beautiful that meat is. He's trimmed it all up. Now, work your magic, Chef. What are you <laughs> going to do? I like to keep it really simple. Um, you can put a spice rub on. Um, you know, whatever you like at home, uh, go for it. You know, cooking is supposed to be fun. There's no rules, uh, trial and error. Um, you know, and just having fun with it. You know, you, you put all this work into hunting it, killing it, gutting it, um, aging it, you know, whatever it is you're doing, um, you know, have fun with it. That's, I think, the biggest rule. Rosemary smells so good. It's a pretty easy, you know, easy to find thing. If you don't have it in your garden, you can get it at the store or get a little plant. Uh, thyme goes on everything. Pretty neutral, but it has, just has like a nice earthy flavor where the rosemary is a bit stronger. You like to always use the fresh versus like just... I find that the dried, you know, even if you buy it and open it fresh, it still has that like dry stale taste. Right. Um, so the, the fresh one just, it just tastes better. But, um, you know, if all you have is dried, you can, you know, experiment with that, see if you like it. Um, but I think the fresh is a little bit nicer. You know, the fresh herbs, A, they smell so good while you're cooking and then... Goodness gracious. Yes, sir. -ry. And then uh, just at the end, you know, just a little oil, just so it doesn't stick. Just kind of rub it in there. And that's that. Then we take it to the grill. Look at how nice that is. And simple, salt, pepper, some herbs, man. It's, you know, not rocket science, super easy. This is the KISS method done by a <laughs> professional. Let's do this. <laughs> so this is ripping hot now, it's about 450. Um, this grill is kind of cool, you can raise or lower the coals, so I got this pretty high because um, we want to get a nice char. You can tell it's fresh just by the glisten, it's got that beautiful, shiny, beautiful yeah. look. It's it just nice looks and red, it's yeah. beautiful, yeah. Um, so we'll just go ahead and close this. Um, I find it gets hotter with it closed, help it cook a bit faster, flip it in a couple minutes. Uh, then I'll lower the coals right down and we'll just do kind of low and slow until it hits medium rare. All right, it's been about five minutes. Kind of just take a peek and check. Yeah, it's got some good kind of crust on it. That looks so nice. All right, so we're going to take a look at this now. Just check the bottom. It's got a nice char and grill mark on it. Um, we're going to lower the coals now just to finish it off and just do it a little bit low and slow. Well, this is only going to take probably another five minutes tops. Um, I'm going to show you the secret weapon. This is about $10. It's a little digital thermometer. If you don't have one, go pick one up. Any, you know, cooking store, Walmart, wherever you get your utensils at. And I'm going to take this off at about 110 Fahrenheit, 115. Uh, and that'll rest up to a perfect medium rare. Life is good in the neighborhood, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> wow. So we've rested this for about five minutes. Let's take this off here. Thank you, sir. About an inch thick. Yeah, however you like it, you can do it thin, you can do it thicker. That's kind of what I like. That looks just like a beef tenderloin. It's beautiful meat. It's, it's one of my favorite big game, game animals for sure.
And then we just made a little sauce. This is a uh, red wine, onion, and, and thyme gravy. So what's in the gravy? It's, uh, I use beef stock, you use game stock if you've got it. Um, thyme, onions, a little red wine, uh, flour and butter to thicken it up. And that's it, super simple. Wow. It cuts really, really nice. Mississippi Whitetail. <laughs> it is so good. Last night we were here and they actually had a backstrap that had been aged, dry aged for like two weeks and it was amazing. This deer was literally killed yesterday, cleaned this morning and cooked today for lunch. My question to you guys is, would you like to see me attempt to dry age some wild game and see how it turns out? If so, please leave it in the comments below. Drop a thumbs up. Everyone out there, this deer meat is what I would say is as good as it gets. The links will be in the description below to the Hunter Chef cookbook. Um, I went through it already. It is just full of love and goodness. Happy times. And uh, I consider you a friend, my bro. Thanks, man. I can't wait to see you again. Everybody else, thank you so much for making this possible. Deer Meat for Dinner would just be a home video if it were, if it were not for you watching, supporting us, encouraging us, and standing behind us. But that's all I got for you today. Take care. God bless. And we gone.